Toast to Life podcast, and we are in our new loft. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> We're in a new place out here in downtown LA, and we have the one and only Melissa Garcia. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wake you. up, people. Thank Everybody, you. wake up. We have an hour back, so we got an extra hour to sleep, right? Think so? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, we have a mutual friend that, because of her, you are here. Yes, thank you, Cindy. Shout out Cindy, shout out Cindy. videographer, lighting, yes, shameless plug to Cindy. Cindy. Um, tell us a little about you, how old are you? I'm 29. 29? Mm-hmm. We're young. You look... <laughs> do, do, I you? Look, do I look young? I yeah. think I got it from like... <laughs> he's like, he's like, yo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm 29, I actually just turned 29 um, in August, thank you. Oh, shit. Yeah. Do you get like the compliments that you look... Way younger than 29. Yes, especially without makeup on. They were like, <laughs> you know, when I was like 21, people would think that I was like 17, which I uh, shout out to my parents. Shade. Sometimes yes. it's better to be young than to yes. look old and not even be old. Yeah. Uh, even like going to the bar sometimes, like peop- like the security would be like, um, this isn't you. And I'm like, <laughs> I-, I used to smile and show my teeth. I was like, so, you, you, you can't mistake the big teeth. So <laughs> when we go to a bar, what's the number one drink you go? What's your go to drink? It varies. Mm. On the it, day? On my mood. <laughs> if we're in a happy party mood, where we at? Um, night or day. Ooh, night. Um, whiskey. I love the Jack Daniels, which I saw oh. him bringing. And I was like, ooh, ooh. But, you know, I'm trying to be good. You know, um, trying to be Shout really out good. my boy, Jose. <laughs> Come in, Jose. Don't worry about it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Ooh, wow, 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 wow. You know, the only reason why I like Jack Daniels is because of Frank Sinatra. Shout out. He, oh. That was his favorite drink. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm trying to be good. You know, trying to be. All right. And down. if we're in a brunch setting, what, what's, a, what's a good Tequila. one? Tequila. And like, kind of like, oh, margaritas and be cute and like round, little, little, round them up. little fruity like stuff. And you know, <laughs> when it's like the night or like, like it will be the whiskey or like an old fashioned. Mm. And then those are. There we go. So go. when you're at a, when you're at a bar, do you get crazy hit on? So what's the craziest time you've gotten hit on? <sighs> or in line? What's a pickup line that you've got? There's no lines. They just like look or no. they just kind of like say where are you going i'm like away <laughs> i mean um honestly like i i give props to guys that come up to me when it when they do because um most of the time they just like stare i think they just get scared i don't there, know or there's nervous. those guys at, at the back of the bar they're just like sitting. yeah and then i'm like you know you know what i mean i i feel like he does that <laughs> Jose, do we do that? You stand so, in the back of the bar? Yeah. You don't... You know, honestly, <laughs> I feel like guys should honestly, like, be Confidence. like... Yeah, be confident. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Because guys don't, like... I feel like they get scared and, like, oh... Not all the time. Like I, I say, like, no, thank you. Or... I'm not, I'm not a bitch. You know, if you're being annoying, then I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple of chances. Yeah, yeah. And then if, if, it, you, if you don't understand what I'm saying, like, hey, I'm not interested pretty much, I'm like, nah. Nah, that's understandable like, nah. because <laughs> there's there are people that come off just strong. Yeah. They don't know how to take no for an answer. Yeah. And then we fall into situations where girls get put in a place that they're just very uncomfortable. And, yeah. it, and it sucks. Yeah. You know, I'm talking. And I think it's for both ways, to be honest. I've, yes. I've seen, I've seen guys that are like, oh no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> back away. <laughs> but it, like, I seen like when, um, like say girls hit on guys, especially when they're drunk yeah. or whatever, guys are just like, and fix their hat backwards. I'm like, but is know? that, <laughs> but is that the, like the, the double standard that when it happens to guys, it's okay. But when it happens to girls, it is not okay. It is a double standard. It sucks. Yes. It just depends. You know, a lot of, 
it just depends on the person, right? Yeah. And I guess it's just like the approach and like if there's it's always about the vibe, you know? Yeah, like the, I if anyone has seen my boyfriends, they're all different. Mm. All of them different. Do um, we do we have a type? Do we have, can we throw that out there? Do we do have, I a have a type? I do have a type, but I don't go to my type. Does that make sense? <laughs> I I love um I love like the honest vibe where it's just like they're funny but when it gets witty mm. and clever and like they have like clever responses yeah I'm just like okay there we go <laughs> they can handle me <laughs> and You're then the I one, think bro. And You're then the also one. the fact like when it comes like this the sexual tension and mm. so right off the bat like with that I think that is so. For me, um, if you saw my exes, they're like, yeah, they're tall, short, you know, very. Have you ever been taller than one of your boyfriends? Or Have same I? height? No, same height. Yes, same height. But, but we, and with heels? And with heels. Yes, no one actually. Yeah, no one was shorter than me. And I, <laughs> and I say I think about that. I think about it because like, I don't have like a lot of like exes or whatever. But yeah. I'm just saying like I'm just. No, nah, I mean, the only reason I'm asking... Do you have a type? Do I have a type? Man, toxic. Yeah. Oh, uh, that I was love, me. Uh, I love toxic That was me um, in Halloween. <laughs> I was uh, dressed as a devil. So I, was, I actually have like the blacked out eyes too. And then I was La Toxica. So. <laughs> I think uh, Cindy last week was Misty from Pokemon. <laughs> oh, how cute. Oh, you know, uh, her and I met at a Sharky's. And she was like, so the cutest thing. And I remember her because like I was getting a little bit tipsy drunk already. And then she was like, oh, my God. So shout out to Cindy. I love her so much. She's so cute. Cindy, and she's, Cindy's she's retired like, now, she says. Oh, yeah, because she's like, a, she's crazy. Like I seen her Instagram post and she like lives. I'm like, girl, how do you See, The reason, you know, we how talk about do it. That? She has a tough time like hanging on to guys because she lives more than the guys yeah no the, I the guys that. literally like baby pick me up she's like I, I don't need to pick you up you need to pick me up yeah oh i'm just like hey gosh. sometimes sometimes you a know, man has to carry the weight and not the girl at, at least and um, that's that, that's the ultimate goal so so since we're in the girls and guys topic let's talk about relationships sure. someone asked on Ooh. the post that i did yesterday they said talk about true love do you believe in true love yes Yes. Mm. Oh. Why? <laughs> My parents. Uh, they've been married for 42 years. Shout out your parents. 42 yeah, years. My, wow. my sister. Oh, my sister. Excuse me. My mom is uh, 66 and my dad is 73. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Uh, they get on each other's nerves, but they still love each other. <laughs> <laughs> where, um, where do they originate from? Well, my dad is from Mexico. What part? Uh, I can't say because I don't speak Spanish. Don't hate me. Um, no, 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 don't worry. There's uh, a lot uh, of people uh, that uh, uh, are. Don't, uh, I can't say it. Something. From what? I uh, don't ask me. Don't repeat it. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> don't repeat it. And then um, my, my he's also a half Italian, which mm. is why uh, he has green eyes, oh. and then my mom has brown eyes. So she kind of like fucked it up, <laughs> and I have hazel eyes. So fuck. <laughs> um, so my mom is uh, full Peruvian. So she oh, was from uh, Lima, Peru. So you're Peruvian, American, Mexican, and Italian. Yes, sir. Ooh. I know. They, I have they a little make, spice. They put it in a blender and just a spice. And a little spice. bit of spice. So, with the true love part, yeah. What do you think comes into effect? Because, uh, in effect, to That's make a, a successful relationship work. Yeah. Um. Your honest opinion. Yeah. Um. Hands down. Uh, communication mm. um, and <clears throat> that's a very broad thing and, and I think it has to be um, brought into like being secure with yourself and your, yeah. with your partner yep. because honestly I hate and I, not not to knock on anyone's relationship this is not um, you know it sucks on my end sometimes because let's say someone that I have like mutual friends with and then, um, let's say guy or girl, but mainly guys, they're, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I had to unfollow you because my girlfriend got mad that I like your picture. I'm like, And yeah, and I was like, man, like, I I was like, I don't even fucking talk to you, dude. Like, <laughs> why the fuck did, is your girl getting all fucking, don't get me started, I'm getting all mad. Nah. I, I, I just think 
that it has to stem from like being honest with yourself like yeah. if like honest with like your partner because your partner is gonna look they're gonna like be like damn she's hot or damn like yeah. i would say that too damn she's a fat ass and you know <laughs> like damn like she's like really cute and, yeah. and and i'm very honest and i it's i think when it becomes when i get mad and jealous is when someone is like point blank like hitting on my dude yeah and like, like you're in front di- of me you're getting disrespected yeah because like i i get it like guys girls will be like oh like x y and z blah 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 but yeah. when you're doing it in front of me i'm like come on girl. Like, <laughs> i'm right here like relax like, like hold my hold my fucking ears I guess, here like, we go i guess it's just what is very picky for me when it comes to true love i think that people should be understanding where i'm at yeah and what's you know, your what's your top three uh, qualities that you look for in the relationship that you know? Hey, we need these three in order for it to last. Have a job, be <laughs> have a fucking job. Number one, I'm a hard ass fucking worker. I love, I love uh, work hard, play hard. I you know I love to go out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, n- my job, my career is like my number one. So that is. That is uh, number two, I would say, um, yeah, go like vibing. Like Mm -hmm. you can be fun and, you know, I don't know what else to say about like vibing. I I, I feel like everyone has their own vibe and it just depends on the person. Yeah, it does. Everybody's different. Yeah. And then three, honestly, like, like be a great communicator. Um, I think it's also stems because like my major is communication studies. And so like I I'm like. Man, if you feel something, you feel uncomfortable, tell me. Yeah. If you feel like, you know, you don't, I don't know, just tell me. If I want like to I wanna know. Yeah, if you like a certain thing, you don't like a certain thing, like, yeah, communicate. I but it, I just had this, like, in the morning, we we're talking about it. There are some people that they say about communication, and we just have a tough time communicating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, when we start talking, say, X problem, when we get into the conversation, we can't finish it because emotions play in part mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that communication literally you're talking and it just turns worse yeah no i i hear you I, it's more of like be honest i don't like to pry like hey what's going on and ask conjillion times and then like yeah. they're finally like, exposed like this is what i'm feeling i'm like can you just have told me yeah uh, before for sure. but yeah like yeah that what you just said about that um it's very sensitive damn i feel you so <laughs> ask away I want to know what you guys want to know. <laughs> so let's talk about your social media, oh Miss. What do you have, like 24,000 followers? Something like that. <laughs> Something like that? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's not anything. They're all looking at me like, oh, my God. And no. then I, like, <laughs> I, I looked at your, I, you know, I had to look, go look through your social media. I seen them. I seen your posts about, like, your Jake, what was it, Jake Cruz? And oh, all those yeah. people you meet? Yeah. Or you I've, have met or... I've uh, shout out to Jay Cruz. I've known him since I was 19. Um, you know, great person. I'm sorry. Hey, no, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Like I've been, I've been in the industry for a while. So. How long have you been in this communication industry, radio industry for? Um, I would say since, I wouldn't say radio per se, but I would say like in the industry of 14, 15. Sure. Yeah, Jesus. that's just because like I started like like hanging out with um, like Asian people because I live in San Gabriel. But definitely, uh, it grew into uh, me hanging out with like forest movement, and then the whole like vibe of that, like taking care of their MySpace at the time. Forest I'm, movement, I Jesus miss, Christ! I Tell miss me, you MySpace. guys know who that is? Yes, uh, Jose. Do you know who that is? Far East movement. I'm about to kick you out, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it stems from that. And um, shit, I forgot the question. <laughs> about being a, being in the industry, like your social media, how did how did that all play an effect into your life, like your life role? Um, there's a lot of positive and negatives on there. So let's um, talk about the negative. Okay. I want we want to get to the the crazy parts, the juicy ones, the juicy ones, exactly. Yeah. Um. Let's just say there's like the aspect of what I just mentioned about like, don't talk to my guy like that. I get blocked. Uh, it just sucks. It just sucks. Um, um, also to, you know, 
postings. Well, I started posting like more, I would say like provocative stuff, I guess, <laughs> and because um, prior I, I felt like I couldn't mm. because of work or people wouldn't take me seriously or like, yeah. you know, um, I really wanted people to be like, hey, like this is a girl that you can take seriously and like and as a job or just like yeah, anything. I think just because like me and Cindy, we, we, we've talked about this. We've a lot of times and just seen the world that where it's at, like guys are so afraid of girls in power with girls with knowledge. We're so afraid of if a girl is proud of her body posting it. And how you said, not taking them serious. Mm -hmm. We go mm -hmm. back to like the old school. I would say, unfortunately, like Mexican way. You're good in the kitchen, cleaning, no. being a mom, being a housewife, oh, hell and that no. that's all it, that's all it has to be. Machismo type of vibe. Machismo. Yeah. Um, nope. Damn. That, yeah. That, I don't fuck with that. No. No. Nah. No. 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 Was how you said earlier. Shit, you better have a job. Like, yeah. You no. Take care of you, and then I always say it. When you bring two powerhouses together, in my opinion, you just make a great empire. Mm -hmm. But when one is carrying the whole weight, yeah, then it just it trembles. It's not on a on a hard surface where it's gonna last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But going back to what you said about posting your provocative pictures and stuff like that, like how did that affect you in that industry? Um, it didn't now because like I'm like already like servicing another chapter in my life where I don't need like, Hey, like this girl, like blacklist her or something like that. Yeah. Ooh, um, yeah. Yeah. I've been blacklisted in an industry. Yep. And you, there's a, there's you a became whole, part of the cancel culture. Yeah. I became that, you know, um, especially with somebody that was, that is currently on air. Um, so, but that's a, that's a whole way. different story. And here I am. Yeah. Yeah. And, for sure. And you know, there's a, a famous, and also embedded in my mind because I'd like to say, like, fuck that. Because, like, look at me. Because he told me I would never be more than an intern. <sighs> and I'm like. And here I am, bitch. <laughs> here that's I am. good for you. Staying in the same fucking job for I don't know how many years. And, okay, that's cool. So. <laughs> so so you, you've been in the, in the negativity aspect. You've been doubted. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, I. It is in my podcast, like I, I have uh, like what I told you before. I, What's your podcast name? Let's let's shout that out. Shout out to Switch Lanes. Um, Switch we Lanes. Uh, Where the, can we find that at? Everywhere. Um. Yeah. Like the our iHeart Media. Um. Slash like the radio. The um. You put me on a spot. Oh my gosh, Pandora. Damn. Uh. <laughs> Spotify and also iTunes. Damn that. That's dope. Yeah, thank you. It's like seven, season one is out, see, right? It's very fast, very uh, brief. Um, it, it actually, it's almost the anniversary of it. I recorded last uh, December, and it came out yes. in yeah, it came out in this, in January, and I I spoke about a lot of like things that happened to me, uh, especially like social media being blacklisted. Yeah. Um, because you said your your podcast is very controversial. Right. Yeah, um, and then it's solely controversial because of what I just mentioned right now, being blacklisted by somebody, and still, it's still crazy how yeah. it that happened like six years ago, this incident or whatever, and having um, still people like, should I fuck with her or not? And still people be like, oh, Damn. like, I'm sorry, like, Mel, like, you know, I had to, like, cut you off because of this person, but, you know, that's all... It's all done. So anything like that's like so childish. It is. Like and unless you had like a real, real good reason, like disrespect was present, mm -hmm. then I, insecurity is like I don't think should ruin re business relationships. Yeah, it, it, I would say it was disrespectful in my part at the yeah. time because you know um, basically what happened was like I was seeing someone in an industry and didn't take him like seriously. And then, um, but we were like seen together a lot. Yeah. And w people, he was introduced to me as his girlfriend, but never really, you know. So one day we just got into like a huge fight because I was seeing someone else. Mm. And he found out and he was like, oh, fuck her, you know, whatever. Ooh. And, you know, you know, that, that vibe where. The whole trip, the whole domino mm -hmm, effect happened after mm -hmm. that. So, you know, yeah. and in and, and all positive perspective, I feel like. You know that's good that he, 
you did that because now I just know that, you know, I, even from last night, like yeah. radio isn't it. So uh, it's all about tech and, and in television. So that's where I'm at. And I'm just I'm just happy to where where everything played out. So switching switching lanes, you know, out, yeah, out of this lanes. like ooh, it was yes. that was a good part. Yeah, switch lanes uh, is basically like what it's uh, what it is. Like you can everyone has their own path, but since I, you know, I originally wanted to be a personality. I was mm-hmm. like, that's so fun or whatever. Yeah. But I found out that I like working in the behind the scenes part. And you don't like being like on the on the camera. Yeah, that's like that? fun. Which is why I'm here. <laughs> but but every every time I think about it, I'm like, man, I I would rather use like my mind uh, to you know navigate mm. through things. And yeah. you know, I have two jobs right now: one for NBC Sports and another one for a marketing agency. And How is that NBC Sports? Oh. I seen that, and she, <laughs> once she sent me your profile, yeah, we were, I was looking into it. I was like, bro. That is legit. Ah, uh, thank you. I, I work for the Olympics, um, so I'm really excited to uh, to go back to Stamford, Connecticut, which they're based. Um, for this past summer, they sent me t- over there in the East Coast yeah. for the Tokyo Olympics for yeah three weeks, and it was amazing. And then I'm going back in February and for another three weeks. Um, Shit. Everything paid for, um, food and hotel and flight, everything done. And that, and that, thank you guys. And I, I totally like, I still like humble myself every single day. And I put like posts up that, that say like, never forget because I, it took me a while to be where I'm at Mm. and didn't, you know, I remember still being broke. Um, that's just, and the fun, uh, shout out to Fashion Nova, you know, uh, working for $8 an hour, um, you know, and it sucked and having, you know, uh, an apartment to pay for in college. And then, um, yeah, it's just a lot of shit that I feel like, well, you, and also I put myself into you, a lot of times. You've been through it. Yeah, I've been, yeah. How and, broke, how broke were you? If um, you don't mind me asking. Yeah, like, broke, a, broke, no, no, ask, yeah. Um, I was as broke as I couldn't afford, um, I sold a Tommy's on the mall, like a uh, dollar seventy-five. Damn. Um, also, I wore the same uh, white Converse for like ever. And uh, I, I, I was in Northridge, like I went to season, mm-hmm. and I couldn't afford sandals either, so I, I kept reusing them. So yeah, wow. and I didn't have a car. Um, it took me a while to get a car. Actually, my own car was in two thousand um, eighteen when I got it. Very recent. There you go. Thank Hell you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's been a while. It's and, been a fucking journey. And, you know, I, I still remember being hungry. You know, a lot of people, and I, and not, and uh, my mom gets mad at me for saying that because, like, you know, they helped me, yeah, they, they helped me um, throughout college, you know, but I didn't want to tell my family, hey, I'm, I'm fucking broke. So I used to, like, go sleep, like, hungry. And, and, I know that my family would like help me, but I didn't yeah. want to let them know. So why, that was like, so oh, why is that though? Is it because you wanted to? So backstory. Okay, so the reason mm. why also I was like extremely broke is because I was attending CSUN, right? And mm-hmm. I was, yeah, partying a lot with. Uh, I worked at Power One Hundred Six, um, and that was like my party days. And every day, Monday through Sunday, was something of like party, party, party. And it was it was such a fast life. Jeez. And um, I didn't have time to study, and and I just yeah I fucked up in school. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, financially kicked me out for a semester, and I didn't have. Um, yeah, I didn't have. I couldn't go back to season. I had to go to the community college, which was Pierce College in oh, in um where is that at in <laughs> over there somewhere in the near there, near near the valley area. Yeah. And um, so I didn't want my family to know because like my mom, she'll be like, get in the house. They condemn us. Our parents, I think. <laughs> when, yeah, because I remember when I eh, I retired from college. <laughs> it was the same thing like why this that and just like i tell even like the people we coach i can't tell you to go because i haven't finished there's mm-hmm. people that i know haven't finished but everyone find, has their own lane find your lane yes. find your outlet uh-huh. find mm-hmm. when you know you don't got to be stuck in your nine to five for the rest of your life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everything's for a moment so 
So we end this part here. What's what was your motivation through those hard times, through those dark times? That those no's, mm. the no's that told me no, I don't have enough experience. Yeah. No, I cannot do it. I had an ex boyfriend that worked at Snapchat told me, "Shut up, it, it won't ever happen." And I'm like, "Bet, okay, cool." And um, you know that that still fuels me today. And I think now that. You know, and still remember being broke. I think I, I feel like everyone should remember never wanna that. Never want to go back? Never want to go back. And I don't, I will never go back. We'll never fucking be broke once again. Ooh. Only if we're paying our bills, then I'm okay to be okay, broke. Okay, that, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One, two, three. We're ready. Are we good? Yeah. All right, because the public was asking, can we name all the places you worked at and Ooh. currently work at? Yeah, um, do, do you want to know, like... From the beginning. <sighs> Okay. First, first, first job from the beginning. Where Hollister. We at? Hollister, shit. And that was at the Northridge Fashion Center, and Got I it. was only employed for like, uh, just like, three days. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was there for only a month, but apparently, you know, not gonna knock on them, but I wasn't, I wasn't wide enough, so they fired me. <laughs> so um, second day, I picked up Fashion Nova. That lasted for like about like ten months, and shout out to them because I. Uh, <laughs> um, but that was like everything was during college. So yeah. during during uh, like Fashion Nova time, like prior to that, I was uh, intern at Power One Hundred Six. Oh shit! I was, there we um, go. Uh, first semester was uh, sales, and the second semester was programming. And then um, after, I'm going to speed it up now. So, no, no, you're good. It is because it's a lot of shit. So, <laughs> um, afterwards, Name drop them. Yeah, afterwards, I uh, went to Amp Radio and I was street team there for a while. And I had to, I had to let that go because I wanted to finish college. They, they, wanted, um, they wanted me to work this event for the Katy Perry. And I'm like, and. I said, no, I have finals. So they're like, finals are yeah. like my job. And I'm like, I, I got to go. So I was there for a little bit. And then afterwards was like, I finished college and I didn't have a job for like two years. So Dang. that's that's when it, like the, another broke moment for me. I imagine unemployment during this time we would have been rich. I know. It was very hard for me. I My parents were getting, especially my dad was getting really mad at me for like, you know, oh, like, are you, you know, are you sure you got the right degree? And I was uh, heading to depression. It was sucks. Uh, my first job, uh, like, it, like, officially in the industry was iHeart. Mm. And that's, like, a little division called Cats Media. But it was in L.A. Is that and where your name came from, IG? What? Your IG name? Is that where it came from? No, actually, I uh, love... Okay, a brief story. Uh, that came from, like, my ex-boyfriend. I used to be really obsessed with Hello Kitty. <laughs> and then that's why and also i had a cat that i had to put down as oh, well fuck. uh when i was 21 so i loved cats ever since then so that's why instead of hello kitty hello millie hello millie meow that was the origin we're back back back, back, back to it sorry to i just wanted to know i was like hey <laughs> but back, um uh i was yeah i was there at iheart for a couple months got fired um you know i you know didn't have enough experience and people kept telling me I didn't have enough experience. I was like, fuck that. And <laughs> um, after that, I w worked in a, uh, like two agencies. One was, uh, um, you know, uh, one called Kara. And that's like a, an agency where, you know, like you see, it's like an ad agency. So mm. and something like that. And then I picked up Kipwena. Um, yeah, <laughs> Kebuena was, uh, and I was like, you know, I still, a uh, shout out to Don Chato and Choppies. Uh, shame, I'm going to be, yeah. you know how I asked you yesterday? Yeah. Don Chato is literally from where we're at in Mexico. Really? He got hired because of my uncle. No way. That's Swear. crazy. You know, I, I love uh, some people there and I just, I, um, it's crazy. Like last month I, uh, visited visited to one of my managers old previously from there and mm. my my uh, previous uh, co-worker because now they're in Cali mm. uh, oh, 96.3 you, you took the picture right yeah yeah, yeah. so that. that that's like my former they were there at um, uh, LBI well um, but yeah the good times there I learned a lot 
as my brother would say, put a lot of hair on my chest because, yeah, it, if you hear anybody come across that you talked about, like, Que Buena or uh, LBI, a labor man broadcasting, it's, it's an interesting environment and one to grow from. Yeah. And, you know, if you know what I mean. So um, we don't know what you mean. You know, it's a it's a place to learn to de- defend yourself. Mm. You know, like you know, I it, it it was very hard to work there, and I, every day I had to like you know suck it up because I didn't have any other job. Yeah. And every day I would, and I told my my former manager this. I was like, I'm sorry. I um, in between like my work, I would literally job apply every single day. <laughs> so then after that, uh, I got out of there. I was there for like nine months, went to Intercom and in that it was previously uh, CBS radio. Mm, nice. uh, so I'm going back to like basically Amp Radio, which Intercom is like Amp Radio, Jack FM, K-Rock yeah. and The Wave and I uh, forgot the other one. Yeah, mm. so all those stations. I was in the sales department. I was a uh, digital project manager, and that's where I picked up a lot of like the project man project management skills. Because yeah. previously I was in sales, like uh, broadcast media and sales. Um, and then after I I was only there briefly because they they fired me again. <laughs> But it was with another colleague, and shout out to Corbin. Um, he's my colleague now at NBC Sports, but, uh, which is really cool. So, but they decided to close the department, and uh, and I don't know why they they re- were rebranding basically. And um, for the fancy words, we're gonna rebrand. We're yeah, gonna, they were rebranding. We're <laughs> Whatever. But you know, two weeks later, I got a call from uh, NBC for a uh, Channel Four Telemundo. And it was a previously, uh, I was interviewed with them before, but I didn't get the job. But he, now after I got let go from Intercom, I got that call from, shout out to George, he's amazing. Um, he's a, now he's a director in sales and trafficking in um, uh, Channel 4 and Shit. So basically he called me, he's like, hey, like, uh, like uh, are you free basically? Like um, one of our um one of our team members is going to go to maternity leave for like six to eight months. Would you be interested in filling in? I'm like, yeah. Say less. Yeah. Say I, less. I applied to NBC since I got out of college. So basically at that time, moment of time, it took me about four years to Dang. to get that. Like uh, I, it was it was hard. And um, a lot of the people, everyone did not know I was there um, throughout the time. Like when I was at iHeart. Mm-hmm. I uh, since I got let go, I was like, "Damn, I don't want, I don't want to like announce that." So that's where work in silence came in, and I really advocate with that because Ooh. like a lot of people don't know how to not to like say anything or not to shut the fuck up, and <laughs> I I feel like you get a lot done. Yeah, fuck yeah. And you know, move around because I throughout the time. I was at iHeart and I just explained a lot of shit right, right there. And in between internships, I hated. I was in like also, oh yeah, I was in a, in a PR uh, agency that promised me like a like a job after three months. So they didn't pay me. I went to all the way to Beverly Hills, coming back every day, did not pay me one dime. And that's okay because I gained experience. You, you know, whatever. So you've been through it was hard. the ups and downs of yeah. being in the industry and just... Literally following opportunities that pop up. Like, yeah, I, I was hungry for it, and it shit. sucked. And uh, there's a lot of, like, <laughs> in-between things. And um, so I was – yeah, I said I was at Intercom. So I was – and I went to there's, Telemundo. She's outside or something like that. Oh, <laughs> sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I went to Telemundo, and I worked there for, you know, for about nine months as well. They extend – he my manager kept extending my, you know, time there because I was in contract yeah. with them. And I was like, oh, I'm so thankful for them. And then uh, my last like day was January 10th, yeah, uh, 2020. So so now with with all the experience, different jobs, different um, opportunities you've gotten, and that you're in now, what's the what? Let me see it. What's your purpose or what's your plan? Like your five year, like where do you want to be in all areas, like financially, uh, mm-hmm. mentally emotionally and just career wise like where do you want to land because you've you've gone through it 
yeah. from how you said from broke to now doing good and doing better yeah like what's what's a year from now what's two years from now what does that look like being happy um you know i you know recently ended my four-year relationship and we're still working through it as far as like being like friends mm. and that's very difficult because you know there's like do you believe in that like you can be friends with the next i don't know i don't know mm. um the thing is it's it's one of those things where you know i i jokingly say um you know, if I don't find anyone when I'm 35, I'm going to have to marry you. <laughs> There's no way, I guess, you know, <laughs> I'm I, I guess that would be in the cards for me. But yeah. um, I don't know. And I don't know how it's going to be. So relationship wise, I hope to be happy. Mm. Um, I hope to be uh, whoever it is. I don't know. What's one thing that, that has helped you through your relationship? Because and think about it like this. You're talking to a 18 to 21 year old girl, learning, learning about herself, learning about life, and just got off of a say their high school uh, relationship, oh, which God. usually lasts what four or I five years. I really can't with those. I can't. <laughs> yeah, but the reason why is because usually, and even if it's not the high school one, you end a long relationship, and mm -hmm. there's some people that hate themselves they blame themselves left and right they hate life they don't know anything else that yeah. is out there like yeah. they don't want to know so me asking for them what is one thing that you would like you would tell them or better yet tell yourself if you're in that situation boss the fuck up Ooh. i Damn. yeah i uh <laughs> i think i say that confidently i know i say that confidently because yeah. i used to have uh, like uh, prior to my ex, uh, b what I just mentioned right now, but I was in a relationship and it sucked because I was like deeply in love with him and yeah. vice versa. And, you know, family came into play and that's why we broke up. Um, <clears throat> but I say that because uh, after like maybe like a couple of years later, we like rekindled or whatever. Yeah. And uh, that obviously that didn't work out. But, <laughs> um, but I knew then I was like, I knew it like I knew like let's say for guys like would always shrug it off like is he thinking about me why is he texting me or calling me why yeah. is he you know I was like guys do it because they're dumb <laughs> to, to be honest and they are thinking about you and they are wanting to they just don't want to because what, I, mean, I always uh shout out uh Jackie Hakez she always says it and when she told me on the podcast it stuck with me there's people that want to do relationship shit yeah. without having the relationship. Yeah, there's a, that's a whole mess of like topics of with that, and I oh, just oh, it's ongoing. Yeah, there's I just think that like guys, you know, they would always like if you're if this if you ask yourself it, why hasn't he done it yet? Like why isn't he doing this? Like yeah. honestly, because they don't want to. They don't want to. That is that is the ultimate thing. And no, knowing and a lot, me, a lot of people find the excuses. Mm -hmm. They make the excuses themselves. They find the excuse for so and so person. Oh well, they're not doing this because you know what? They have they're a lot busy. going on. They like, have a lot uh, going on. Yeah. They have a lot going on. They uh -huh. have family issues. They have this and that, and it's just like. Bro, they're twenty something years old. Yeah, they're good. They mm -hmm. got no issues. They can. They know what they're doing. Yeah, it's just they don't want to be able. Uh, they don't want to do it. Nah, Bottom line, they would. They would do it if they really wanted to. Uh, I think that's. I think that's a and heartbreaker with that for girls to like to understand. Like, hey, he doesn't want to. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. or vice versa with the guys too. Like guys stay texting them, blowing them up, and showing them out to a great day whatever it is at the end of the day they hit you with the i just want to be friends yeah there is that too <laughs> and i i guess i just like learned that it doesn't happen like it's like whatever happens happens and i hate fucking hate that but i have to say it um you know and it all um, stems from vibes yeah and i just see like We're okay for the good vibes um, buena good vibes. yeah like i you know, it's just a mess. And I, yeah. I think for getting back to that topic of, like, someone that is, like, 18 to 21, like, um, you know, 
I he used to hate like, oh, keep yourself busy. You know, you don't need him. Yeah. You know, you don't the fish in the sea. I heard all the fucking cliches and I hated it. And I was like, man, shut the fuck up. I miss him. Oh, my God. I'm so like in love with him. Why? Why? And I'm just like, man, now now that I think about it, I'm like, yeah, that guy fucking wanted me. Like he yeah. was just being an asshole and you know what like i don't want him back because he's still broken now i'm still talking about that same guy that i talk about <laughs> and, I was like, and you know there's like yeah. one of the things where you just learn so right? so talking about uh feelings i want to jump into that that last topic just because a lot of us and this is the whole my whole thing with the whole podcast is allowing yourself to feel allowing yourself to be in tune with your emotions be one with your emotions it's okay to cry. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel sad. Oh it's okay God. to feel I'm happy. I'm feeling it. What's going on? But it's like uh, how I say, and I've been saying that the past like two weeks, like it's okay. Like if you're going to cry yeah. and be sad, go for it. Mm -hmm. But just find your solution. Find your outlet. What, what can you do to get better? If you can control it, how can you fix it? And if you cannot control it, let it go. Yeah. It's tough. So mental health wise, like mm -hmm. on a, on a one to 10 scale, like where, where are you at? In the last, say, the last week, the last two weeks, the last month, where have you been mentally? Seven. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, it's a lot. I again, uh, pivoting to uh, work-wise, I have two jobs. Yeah. Uh, I'm cr fucking crazy. I know. I have two jobs that are working simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, one job that knows of the other one, and the other one doesn't. Um, I I get really stressed out, and be especially when it's like remote. And yeah. when two meetings are going on at the same time, one laptop is like mute off and camera off. The other one is mute and also camera on. And if if I need to speak, I would like kind of like turn off my camera, mute it, yeah. mute it or whatever, and be like, oh, you know, my my internet, sorry guys, or, you know, oh like oh I oh I have a phone call, like oh I need to go to the bathroom. So yeah, like that. And I've been doing that for like nine months. So how, men how is that, that? That's hard. How is me. that mentally and emotionally? It's hard. It's, it's a lot of anxiety. So I would mm. work wise. That's very hard. And I only would do it for a little bit more. I would say up until January, only having two jobs. Of course, I'm keeping NBC. Yeah, so, of course. But um, uh, relationship wise, what I just mentioned right now, it's yeah. it's very hard because, you know, I still care about him very, very much, um, you know, and it's I think it's very hard. For me to it plays actually, a, it actually plays a toll in your life. Yeah, and it's because like okay, there's a lot of factors that go into a relationship, right? Yeah. I think the number one for me too is like family. Mm. If they're like, if you're like really like, you know, um, really good with like their family and my family, that's like that's that's it. That's like that's the ultimate goal. That is like amazing. It's such a relief. And I yeah. had boyfriends that my parents hated, and it was very hard for me to be like, oh, like I love him, you know, like, oh, like you don't oh, understand, definitely. you don't understand me. And like it's yeah. so annoying. And yeah. like to have you know someone that you know that cares and and vice versa. That's great. So yeah. I think you know what stresses me out is like a relationship because I don't it's still fairly new as far as like our breakup like yeah, it's like no, been no, like no. two it's months it's understandable and for us to be like two years and like I just saw his family like in Halloween <clears throat> so like in his parents too like it's yeah. very hard because like I do care about him and it's like we talked about it and and it's it's hard to like go as far as like talking and being there for each other yeah. and I bring that because uh, you know, he's seen my worst. And um, if you want to talk about mental health, like, yeah, um, you know, you, you talk about drinks. And yes, I I am an alcoholic. And I uh, do attend AAs every once in a while. And um, that that really stems from the partying. The, the lifestyle uh, so early. Yeah, like, I, I used to be really bad. Yeah. Really, really bad. And now that... You know, now that, you know, I'm understanding myself and like how it affects my family, what it is, it's it's very hard. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would say like I'm getting better and it's it's still a work in progress for me. Yeah. And I, I for myself, even though although I do attend these things, um, you know, I'm not going to like stop drinking, but I do want to like try like to be better and control. There, there's always a. A middle point there's yeah. always a balance to everything and this is to me one of the things where 
family wise i've come from an alcoholic family mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that i know that because of alcohol they haven't done anything in life and mm -hmm. it's sad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but one of my biggest teachers for it is my dad you know we're not perfect i drink he drinks a lot i think everybody in the world yeah at one point drinks um but he the one thing he's always told me is where they came from, obviously Mexico, everybody out there drinks and blah, blah, blah. He still made it out here, got his degree, everything. He was mm -hmm. like, the one thing you never do, because we call it Edricio, is never miss your responsibilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. got to go work the next day. I don't care if you're super yeah. fucking hungover. Yeah. Get to work. I yeah. don't care this, that. You make that shit happen. Mm -hmm. So even mm -hmm. even relating outside of the the drinking part, like people... You have responsibilities as a young adult, as an adult, and, and so on and so forth. Make them happen. Mm -hmm. Take care of them. Because the more you wait, the more you let things fall yes. out of place, the more the harder it is to get it all back into place. Yes, definitely, 100%. And I, and I you know, I agree with that, especially because, like, um, you know, knock on wood, and also I'm very thankful that um, my... You know, I would say alcoholism has not affected my work whatsoever. And yeah. like being a, a way and also like for the Olympics too. like, you know, I I worked 12 hour shift and but then went out, you know, to bars and then got back, like only had like three hours of sleep before and then do it again. And I would party and like drink. But, yeah. you know, I the responsibility is there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I had to hold accountability to myself because, you know, my ex seen it all and my family's seen it all and you know um well, it's, uh, it's, it's hard how, how you bringing it up to you just said the most important thing i know i am accountable you're taking accountability of what you're doing your responsibilities mm -hmm. and one of like the people that we have here they're all the same way actually jose is one of the most young guys no most how old is he 20 22 he's drink, like he's like 22 drinks <laughs> drinks like a whole bottle a whole bottle of tequila and uh, vodka in one night yeah that but, used to be the good days but how about that? and and i always bring it up to to anybody that that he comes in a conversation with is he has his own personal training now and mm. i've never seen somebody so committed because they he goes out parties, has fun. You know, he's still young. Ready, he still wear the next yeah. morning, like at six in the morning, five in the morning, I see him posting that he's at the gym, ready to go. I'm like, you're a psycho. <laughs> but it comes, with, it comes with everything, and they're they're both Cindy, Dylan. They're all the same way. And good, getting guys. into the next, the the last topic is the people who you have around you. If you, I said it earlier, if you have five. Five winners, you will be the six. But mm -hmm. if you have five losers, mm -hmm. you will sadly be the next one. And a lot of people do not want to let go of that friend group mm -hmm. to grow. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes that friend group doesn't want you to grow because you're yeah. going to outgrow them. Yeah. I've had that too, which is why, uh, no, nah, don't feel bad for me. I don't really have much friends, but I have acquaintances. Oh, so that's us either. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. <laughs> um, you have a great set of friends. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. But um, yeah, I, I would say the several topic of mental health, yeah. it, it, very, it varies. Um, you know, I try to do things as far as like what keeps me happy, but you need to, 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 you stay need to look positive. out for you. Yeah. And also to not really worry about anybody else as far as like friends wise. Yeah. Yeah. To keep like a close, you, close you just, you just need to make sure your inner circle is tight. Everybody is good. And if at one point we're not good, we check mm -hmm. on them, make sure we work, we work through it or you support them, whatever the way it is. But how I always say, you cannot take care of anybody else. But yourself. No, you cannot oh, take <laughs> you cannot. My mom says that. <laughs> <laughs> no, think about this. So we all were like, oh, I need to take care of this person, this person. But it's like, are you really taking care of you? Mm -hmm. And uh, no, nah, no, nah, I worry about myself second. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah. You need to take care of you in order to take care of the rest. Because if you yeah. can't take care of you, then yeah. <laughs> definitely you can't take care of nobody else. So exactly. I think that because... Now, like, I have my son, uh, my girlfriend, everything, and it's the same way. Like, I'll put myself through hell, but at the same time, I need to make sure I'm still good. Mm -hmm. So I wake up the next day, and I'm doing it once again. That's 
Good for you. So That's it, how it should be. Uh, but it it's how you said this whole topic. It could go on for hours, and yeah. it just matters about about you. But dude, honestly, like I appreciate you opening up the way you did right now Thank because you. I appreciate that, that was one heart to heart, and to me and to the ones listening. If you haven't subscribed, because yeah. you need to subscribe anyway. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> is they're going to relate to that part because they're just like, fuck, she took the words out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. That's and, just what it is. And that's why I wanted to be here. I, a lot of people don't know, and I, I feel like they should know. I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. This is what it is. It's Thank about telling you. your story being and just being vulnerable. That's yes, where we're at. You have a great setup. And, I appreciate and you. And look at all this. I feel like anyone that has like you know like a, a vision or something you should definitely go see because look at this this is really cute we need and to I make like the that. vision happen yes shameless plug vision over there hey. <laughs> what is it one more time cindy what? your visionary what visionary, visionary soul create Ooh. Ooh. we're gonna drop those links at the bottom but Let's go. dude soon to be llc we have great hey. things coming so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yeah Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, follow her, her 24,000 followers on IG. <laughs> Go tune in to her first season of her podcast, Switch Lane. Switching Lanes, and make sure you just follow the journey because there's a lot yet to come. Yeah, I'm not done. <sighs> yeah. We're not Thank done. you. Drop the mic. There we go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Keeping it up. It wasn't actually good. Water? Water. Uh, what kind of water is this? H2O, Boss? This is a Smart? Evian. Evian. <laughs> 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 Stop the faucet right here. Uh, uh, cheers. Cheers.